All right, so for this next segment, we are going to be talking about the Padres bullpen as a whole. And we can start with the closer spot because basically our question is, how should the Padres bullpen be aligned moving forward? Isaac, I'll let you lead this one off. Who do you think the Padres closer should be um, after Daniel Hudson is back? And and I guess who would be your two setup men before that closer? Uh, well, if I had to pick a set closer, which it seems like the Padres are set on just having one closer, no rotation, no like flip-flop kind of thing like the Giants are doing, um, I'd probably go with Denelson Lamette. Obviously, we're trying to have him in a short relief role, whether that be as a set of man or a closer, either one works. But Denelson Lamette has always had really electric stuff. He has loads on loads of strikeout potential. That guy, if you want strikeout numbers, he's the guy you want to look towards. Absolutely fantastic in, in those kind of situations. And I don't think there's anyone on this pitching staff in general that I have more confidence in closing out a game than Denelson Lamette. You saw a healthy Denelson Lamette last year was in the Cy Young running. He was he was our best pitcher by far. Or maybe yes, by far. What am I saying? Maybe not by far. Yes, by far. He was fantastic. Um, you saw the stuff. We saw the potential that he has. And unfortunately, he's a little banged up right now. His arm is a little shot right now, I guess you could say. But if you throw him in that closer role, you get the guy, you know, throwing 96, 97 with an electric slider. He has the potential to throw 99 when he's healthy, when he's out there and his arm's loose. Um, so if I had to pick one, Definitely Denelson Lamette 100%. However, if you could do like some sort of thing where you, they Hudson and Lamette kind of flip flop every couple of days or something like that, um, I think I'd be in favor of that as well. Yeah, I'm with Isaac. I feel like you kind of have to flip flop guys. I feel like it's going to be between Hudson and Lamette, like he was saying, because Lamette is not going to be used to that role. So you want to kind of give him a little bit more leeway, where in tighter games, I would give it to Hudson. So that time, when it comes to playoffs and one of them has a day off, one could still fit in that role in a high leverage situation, closing or set up, and they can just switch between the two. I feel like that gives you more versatility that way. Uh, if not, um, I would feel confident with Palm closing. I know we did a poll and Lamette came out the winners in second, Lance in third, and surprisingly Palm in last. But I feel more confident with Palm closing than Melanson in right now, just because he has that high velocity fastball and his curveball is absolutely dirty. I feel like he gives the lefties hell when he is on the mound and righties seem to struggle with them too. So I feel like that's just another solid option. And you could just flip those three in any way, closing and set up and have those three as your closers or set up. I, uh, I like the idea of having, you know, you know, like alternating guys in and out of that role. Um, I'm also a big fan of having the Nelson Lamette become that closer. Um, hopefully saves his L pin. I know people have talked about in the past that they don't necessarily believe that would be the case, but I do think at the very least it's a lot less wear and tear than a starter would have. Um, and also alternating him, I think it's a good idea to help get him adjusted because there were some concerns uh, among you guys, um, among the Friar faithful about you know moving him into that that closing role where you might want to see him there first. You might want to see how he responds to you know being put in that high leverage situation. So I'm totally fine with doing that. I would say instead of going with Hudson, I would probably go with Drew Pomeranz as that like alternate. Um, and I would rock with Tom if you're going against, you know, a heavy lefty set at, in that ninth inning, or if that's when the heart of the order is up, because we've seen that Palm is the guy that you want to throw against the other team's best. That's the way I've always kind of looked at the Padres bullpen and gone, all right, Palm is always that guy. You can either have him closed. You can either have him set up. Uh, you can even pull him in, bring him in a lot earlier if it's a you know a very high leverage spot, like a say that it's you know fifth inning in a playoff game and the bases are loaded with one out. You're like, all right, we need a guy to come in here and punch out two guys. That's Drew Pomeranz. Like he's our guy that that goes and does that kind of stuff. Um, and you know he's the guy that is going to be put in the most high leverage spots. I am a big fan of using Drew Pomeranz in that way. So that could definitely be in a closing role. Um, so those would be my two guys. Very interestingly enough, none of us brought up the Padres' current closer, Mark Melanson, who. I've seen some people say, like, get Melanson off this team. I don't think any of us would advocate for that whatsoever. Um, but I do think that, you know, moving him into that setup role, seventh inning kind of role is probably the best spot for him. Now, he has been fantastic over the course of this season. I don't think any of us would argue with that. With that. However, he's, what, 35 years old. The league knows his stuff for the most, spot, for the most part. 
He's had a couple, you know, outings where it's looked really rough. And Isaac was bringing this up. He is not going up there and gener- generating swings and misses at as high of a rate that we would expect both Drew Pomeranz, um, Daniel Hudson, and L- Denelson Lamette to do. That's why I think we would have those three guys as the main arms in the bullpen above him. But I do think he is that, you know, like that fourth most important arm where he's pitching in a lot of eighth innings, a lot of seventh innings. And if it's a playoff game scenario and your starter only goes five, he's probably coming into the six with any combination of Hudson, Pomeranz, and Lamette coming in after him. That's where I would say. Um, and then I think Tim Hill, um, and, and, and definitely go through these other guys after I do, but I think Tim at Hill is kind of that, you know, you put him in when – when it's when it's a like the worst possible spot that you know you could be in, um, we've seen that he has really excelled in that role. And then with Strom coming back, you have a great guy for lefty and lefty matchups. So I really like that idea with with Matt Strom coming back. Um, and, and that's kind of where I'm at with this bullpen. You know, it's still a couple other arms: Pierce Johnson, uh, Emilio Pagan. Those guys, you know, they can come in, but they're more like like secondary options, I would say, moving forward. Um, and then Strom can also be that long reliever. Same with Nabil Chris Mad and Craig Stammen. So that's kind of where I'm at with this bullpen as a whole. But I'm also in favor of, you know, moving the the closer spot to either a Drew Pomeranz, Denelson Met, and even potentially Daniel Hudson. Because I, I don't think come playoff time you want to throw Mark Melanson in a ninth inning. Um, and, yes, I've seen that he's done really uh, – he's done a fantastic job this year. That's why he is an amazing setup man. But that's my opinion. Um, and if, if you guys have a different opinion too, like we understand, like there, there's reason to, to keep Mark in there, but that's at where I think we all are. Um, but Isaac, what about these other guys? Where do you kind of see this bullpen as a whole shaping out? Yeah. Um, I'll talk about the other guys in a bit, but I haven't given my reason as to why Mark Melanson would fall out as a closer. Uh, when you have less strikeouts and innings pitched, I cannot advocate for you to be our closer. Um, you, Obviously, like I'm never opposed to guys that pitch to contact and allow some weak contact, but that just hasn't been the trend lately with Mark Melanson. A lot, a lot, a lot of hard contact. Ever since it feels like really like mid June, there's been a lot of hard contact. Is what it feels like. Um, you saw him get saved by Manny Machado on a double play against the Dodgers. You've seen a lot of hard hit contact off of him lately, and that's just not something you want out of your closer. Think about it. Come playoff time, if if we're able to make it, which I, I still think we should, um, you know, wild card game, whatever it is. You're going to be facing either the Dodgers or the Giants most likely. How are you going to feel if, you know, you're up by one run, your closer comes in, but your closer doesn't have the strikeout potential to just sit all three of them down. He's pitching to contact to Mookie Betts, Cody Bellinger. Well, Cody Bellinger sucks. Um, Max Muncy, Mookie Betts, Max Muncy, Justin Turner. How are you going to feel about that? Because I know I don't feel good about that. Um, you forgot Trey Turner. Oh, my God. See, that's even more annoying. Um, Trey Turner as well. Now that I, now that, I, now that Chase brought it up, um, but obviously, you know, you just need guys that are going to go up there and pretty much just pump it up. The Padres have a very rich history of closers. I mean, yeah, maybe we're a little spoiled with closers. Trevor Hoffman, Craig Kimbrell was here at one point. Kirby Yates was an all-star closer. Just Trevor Rosenthal was amazing down the stretch last year. We're pretty spoiled with closers, and um, you know, so if you're going to look at Mark Melanson's past numbers. His his really good last like I guess he was okay in 2019, but this like from the eye test I was not very impressed. But he hasn't had insane numbers like closing type numbers ever since he was in Pittsburgh, which was I believe 2016. He has not been able to be, be a closer. Um, so as far as the other guys go, you guys bring up Drew Pomeranz. I personally love Drew Pomeranz as a setup man, um, and yes, he can be a closer absolutely. Um, I think he can pitch anywhere, no matter the inning, just because that's just – he was already a starter. He's been a mid-relief guy for us out sometimes. and uh, But I personally like him a lot in the setup role where, you know, up by one, up by two. He's going to keep you up by one, up by two, and give you, give the offense another opportunity to get some insurance runs. Um, and then you and then you're able to throw it to Nelson LeMet, Daniel Hudson in there. Because, Matt, you did mention that, you know, when, when it comes to the best guys in the lineup, you want Drew Pomeranz up there. I absolutely agree. However, I'm not opposed to having to Nelson Lamette facing the best guys in the lineup as well, whether that be in the setup or the closer role. So, um, but mentioning the other guys, if it were up to me with all the with the arms coming in to the bullpen, Mark Melanson kind of falls. I think he falls below Lamette. I think he falls below Hudson. I think he falls below uh, Pomeranz, Hill. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting some guys, but 
you know, there's just a lot of arms in this bullpen. So I, I'm not a huge fan of Mark Melanson in the closer role. I love a lot of the other guys. I think this bullpen is still the best bullpen in baseball numbers wise and on paper. Uh, but however, I think if we're going to win a lot of more baseball games down the road, it's going to depend on the closer, the closer role. And I don't think Mark, Mark Melanson is the guy for that. Yeah, we just have a lot of guys that seemingly strike out a lot more people than Mark Melanson, and he just, you know, kind of loses that closer role because realistically you don't want your closer pitching a contact because you're going to get hurt. We've seen it time and time again with Kenley Jansen because his strikeout numbers have declined. And most closers around the league, they strike out a lot of guys. You look at Edwin Diaz, you look at Tyler Rogers, you look at Craig Kimbrell, you look at all these other guys, they strike out a lot of people. And, you know, we have a lot of guys in our bullpen that can do that. Austin Adams is, you know, arguably a, a strikeout artist. He just walks a lot of people. Pierce Johnson's the same way. So you have those secondary guys that can also pitch in seemingly a mid to high leverage situations, depending on how many people are on base because of how inaccurate they can be. But then you also have, you know, your levers in Craig Stammen and Matt Strom that have also come in high leverage situations and have performed so, and they have more strikeout potential than Mark said. I feel like he's slowly is falling down the ladder more and more and more, the less he strikes out people and pitches to contact. And then, you know, the more he just to contact, the more he falls down the ladder and the more other guys move up the ladder and you rather see these guys instead of Mark Melance. And I think that's where we're all at. Like in a seventh inning with the heart of the lineup coming in, we much rather see Matt Strom or Pomeranz come in rather than Melanson because you have to face Trey Turner, Justin Turner, and Mookie Betts, probably not in that order, but those three guys, I much rather have Stromerens come in for that instead of Melanson because chances are Trey Turner, you know, for some reason is just a monster against the Padres. Mookie Betts is Mookie Betts and Justin Turner has faced the Padres pitching for a long time. So it's kind of scary watching those three go up against a struggling Mark Melanson right now and being really confident in him getting out of that inning safely. I have one last thing. Um, I mentioned earlier that Mark Melanson's kind of been getting saved by this defense. His ERA is, I believe, a 235 right now. His expected ERA is a 405, which is, that's that's a very, very large margin, like a very large difference. So you can see through the numbers, and I and you know, I'm not crazy about like expected ERA, expected batting average, anything crazy like that. But when you look at that number, that is huge. You can't have a guy that's, that's getting saved because that's not always going to be the case. You're not always going to have Manny Machado making insane plays down the line or Jake Cronenworth making a diving play or Fernando Tatis being Fernando Tatis. That's not always going to be the case. So that's why, you know, we're advocates of getting him out of that closer role. I think that's a great thing to bring up. Um, and, you, you know, you talk about it like over a 4 ARA is not what you want from a closer ever. Obviously, he's pitched better than that this year. And a lot of that hard contact has been right to guys. But like you, like you guys are both saying, Mookie Betts is going to find the gap. You might go and pitch against, you know, these lower level teams and, and lower level hitters, but come playoff time, you're going to be playing the best of the best. And that's where the issues are, I think. And that's why it does seem like if they leave Mark in that role, it's going to, if you're in a playoff game, it's a one run game and Mark's coming out to the mound. I'm going to be terrified. I am not going to be confident. I'm going to be terrified in that spot. Um, so that, that's where I think we are on that, but th that that's going to do it for this segment. And tomorrow we're going to talk about, um, Trent Grisham and Tommy Pham.